Hi everyone, it's Kung Xiao here. So today I want to talk about the Electro Traveler. I've taken a look at her, his or her kit and I've done some mathematical comparison and analysis as well. I want to share with you guys. I have to say I'm quite impressed with uh, the Traveler. It's better than I thought because I always thought that Traveler is uh, worse than some of the 4 star characters. But yeah. So anyway, let's talk about the kit first. The The way this video works is that first we talk about the Traveler, Electro Traveler's kit. We, then we'll do a uh, comparison between the Electro Traveler and Sinchu. And the reason why is because I feel that the Traveler really is like a Electro Sinchu with some differences. And we'll talk about that in this video, no worries. And finally at the end of it, I'll talk about a TLDR and also at a very very early stage, what I think the best build for Traveler is like without having actually crunched the figures for the artifacts etc. Alright. Alright, so Traveler step progression, I'm not going to talk about that because uh, this is the same whether it's Animal Traveler or Joe Traveler, yeah? Okay, so first off, Lightning Blade, which is the elemental skill. Unleashes 3 Swift Thunder Shadows that look like this. Okay, it's like a Thunder Disc that deal electro damage to opponents and leave an abundance amulet behind after hitting an opponent. There's no statement here that says that it has to be a different opponent, so I would assume that if we manage to hit all 3, on the one opponent, we should get three abundance amulets with the C1 effect. Yeah, I know, I know. There's a two, but the abundance amulets can be created initially. C1 will increase this to three. Okay, we'll talk about C1 later. When you use this skill, you will reset any abundance amulets that were generated, which means that after generate leaving behind the abundance amulet, you need to pick them all up before casting again. This comes into play for sacrificial sword, and we'll talk more about that later. Abundance Amulets. So when a character is near an Abundance Amulet, they will absorb it and obtain the following effects. I hope this is much better than Xiang Ling's uh, Chili Pepper because the Chili Pepper that Xiang Ling leaves behind after Goba uh, leaves a few. The Chili Pepper is kind of hard to pick up. I, I don't know about you guys, but you have to be so exact when you pick up that pe Chili Pepper. That's one of the reasons I dislike that, that particular effect. So I hope that this is better than that. But there's no information right now available to see how that works. Right. So what does the Abundance Amulet do? It restores elemental energy and increases energy recharge. So the skill damage is here. You have a level 9 one which is uh, about 134%. Level 12 is about 157%. But this should be per Swift Hunter Shadow. So if you manage to get hit all, hit all 3 on one opponent right in their face, because the way that... If you look, if you have seen the Electro Attack animation, Electro Traveler Attack animation leaks, you see that it, the way it works is that it casts three. In this direction, it travels in this direction in a three prone direction, yeah. So it becomes wider and more separate as it travels along. So if you cast it at melee range, in theory, it should hit all three on the same opponent, which will give you three times of this damage, which makes it actually very nice in terms of damage wise, yeah. Of course, this is an assumption right now that this can happen. Without knowing how, and we were actually testing it in game, we can't really say. But I do believe that that should be the way it works. All right. Okay. So on top of that, when you pick up a bundle amulet, you get four energy if your skill is at level seven and above. Energy recharge increases twenty percent throughout the levels, but there are other ways to increase it, and we'll talk about that later. The buff of the energy recharge increase lasts for six seconds. The abundance amulet itself, abundance amulet itself li lies on or lays stays on the field for 15 seconds. Cooldown is 13.5 seconds, but there's a way to reduce reduce it. We'll talk about that later. Now let's talk about the elemental burst. This is the reason why I say that uh the electro traveler is like an electro sinchu. Because it leaves behind a lightning shroud. Which, when your active character's normal or charge attack hit opponents, it will trigger this falling thunder. So it's like Sinchu's burst, right? Sinchu's burst is the same thing. But Sinchu's burst, that you can't be triggered based on charge attack, it can only be triggered from the normal attack. And you will trigger the rain waves or the sword waves, the rain sword waves, waves of the rain swords on your opponent on a 2 3 or 2 3 5 if you are on C6 cycle. Okay? But the difference here is that for the Electro Traveler, whenever you hit, you actually get to re 
generate energy as well. At level 7 plus, you get 1. 1 energy. Okay. Upon hitting. And the instance of Falling Thunder is actually regenerated every 0 0.5 seconds, which means that this is actually twice as fast as Sinchus, because Sinchus is every 1 second. So this means uh, the energy that you gain per second is 2. Okay, The damage is also doubled. I'll, I'll do a comparison against Sinchu later. Oh, but one, one other difference against Sinchu is that this Elemental Burst does damage upon cast, unlike Sinchu's, where Sinchu just gives him a buff. This does damage upon buff, uh, upon cast, sorry. Alright, now Talent Materials, uh, obviously using the Inonazuma Materials, uses the Dragon Crown. Horn of the Dragon Crown, I think. I can't remember the exact name, sorry. Now, passive talents. I, I want to point out one thing out. The A4 talent is not available. There's no information on it now. Which means that depending on how good this is, it may make the Traveler even better. In fact, right now I'm already quite impressed with the Traveler. I'm very keen on trying out the Electro Traveler. And I'm going to be building the Electro Traveler, bef uh, the Traveler before 2.0 is out. Okay, so now let's first talk about the first passive talent. When another nearby character in the party obtains an endowment ambulance created by Lightning Blade, Lightning Blade's cooldown is decreased by 1.5 seconds. And you have 3 ambulance, right? From C1. So that gives you 4.5 second reduction, which means that your Lightning Blade cooldown is at 9 seconds. 9 seconds is okay. It's not too bad. It's okay. So. But one thing to know is there's another nearby character, which means that if the Traveler picks it up, you do not enjoy the cooldown reduction. So all the more reason why the Electro Traveler is really built to be like a sub DPS or support character, yeah? Not a main character. Resounding Roar increases the energy recharge effects granted by Lightning Blade's Abundance Amulet by 10% of the Traveler's energy recharge. So, in other words, right, without doing anything, you will already provide 20 plus 10 default 30% actually, 30% ER, because you get 20% from the Abundance Amulet, you get a, the, by default everyone has 100% ER, right? It's actually not difficult to build 200% ER, if you're not too unlucky, and that means that you can easily get 40% ER per Abundance Amulet. If the Abundance Amulet effect can stack, they are talking about 120% ER buff, 120% increase in the ER buff to your team members, whoever is picking up the ambulance, assuming they pick up all three. So this makes it really, really good. This is a really good ER support character in terms of providing ER. And why is giving ER good? It helps you work towards your burst earlier. That's number one. Number two, the new artifact set, the emblem, the emblem set, gives increase your burst damage based on your ER. So what this means is that the Electro Traveler can be the one to provide the ER while your other main DPS characters uses that particular set and do not have to sacrifice their artifact substats to get ER. They can use their artifact substats to get CR, CD, attack, etc. And rely on the Electro Traveler to give them the ER to boost their burst damage. Now you see why I say the Electro Traveler is really good? Yeah? Okay. On top of that, the burst is like Sinchu's burst, right? You basically provides you constant, constant electro application, right? I mean, obviously, it's not as good as high constant hydro application since constant hydro application enables vaporize. But this also allows you to enable constant electro charge reactions. Yeah, yeah. Remember about electro charge? Remember my Kazuha Man video? I already shared that. Electro Charge is actually the best combination to work with Sword. Okay? So I think you see a pattern coming here. A potential comp. Uh, I'll do a separate video on the comp. Otherwise, there's too much content to cover. Alright, but I, I think you, you get the gist of the potential of the Electro Traveler, yeah? Okay. Now, let's talk about the constellations. Since uh, A4 is not, there's no information on A4 yet. I would really love for he, his or her A4 to be really good. So that we can see how it works, yeah? Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. 
Traveller does not have A4. Traveller only has two passive talents compared to other characters that have three. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. That's my bad. I was thinking that shouldn't be the case in terms of data mine. So, yeah, yeah, there's no other additional talent. There's just two talents here. Okay. So, this is how the Electro Traveller kit is. No other further buff to it. As of now, anyway. Okay. Since this is still in beta. Right, now let's talk about constellations. C1 increases the opponent's amulet to 3. Okay. When Folly Thunder created by Elemental Burst hits the opponent, it decreases Electro Resistance by 15%. Mm, pretty nice and good for Electro Charge reaction because Electro Charge is... Uh, electro Charge is Electro Damage, yeah? Although I can't remember whether reactions do gain a damage bonus from Resistance. I have to double check on that. Alright. Increases the level of Bellowing Thunder by 3. As well, grade level is, level is 15. Character obtains the Abundance Amulet generated by Lightning Blade. If a character's energy is less than 35%, energy restored by the other Abundance Amulet is increased by 100%. So when your energy is less than 35%, the 4 energy from 1 Abundance Amulet gives you 8 instead. Okay, so that's very nice. Every 2 for C6, okay, I'm not going to talk about C3, C5 since it's very straightforward, just increase the level by 3, yeah? And increase the max upgrade level 2. Every two falling thunder attacks triggered by the elemental burst bellowing thunder will increase the damage dealt by the next falling thunder by 100% and restore additional one energy to the current character. Basically, on the every third of the falling thunder, your damage is doubled and your energy restore is also doubled. 3 for 4, basically. If you cast 3, by the time you cast 3 falling thunders, it's equivalent to the damage and energy regain of 4. It's as simple as that. Alright? Okay, so this is it for the kit for the uh, Electro Traveller. My apologies on forgetting that forgetting that there's only two passive talents of the Traveller, yeah? Now let's talk about, let's look at the comparison between the tra Electro Traveller and Sing Chu, yeah? Electro Traveller versus Sing Chu, okay? So Sing Chu, ignore the bottom half, just look at this yellow portion, is this portion here, yeah? Okay, so Sinchu gives there there are three effects that Sinchu has which the Electro Traveler does not have, which is increased reduction resistance, some healing, and some damage reduction. While all of this is nice, they aren't a very, very significant buff per se. You don't really feel it, but it definitely helps. Now the what this what the Electro, Tra Electro Traveler compensates for not having this is energy recharge. We already talked about it, right? 20% times 3. Stacking is unsure, yes, but uh, I think it should stack. I can't say for 100% that it will. A, the buff lasts for 6 seconds. The amulets will... You need to pick up the amulets that last for 15 seconds. You get 3 x 4 energy. Direct energy gain. Skill damage. At level 9, Electro Traveler, you have 134%. If you manage to hit 3 at melee, it's 402. Assuming that, that work, it works that way. Versus 286 plus 325, which is 611%. Okay. Skill level 12, you have 157%, so it's about 471%. Versus 336 plus 382, which is 718%. But the caveat is that there is a cooldown difference. Sing Chiu's skill cooldown is very, very high, it's 21 seconds. Versus the Electro Traveler, which is 13.5 by default, and 9 seconds if you get another active nearby character to pick up all three abundance amulets. What this means is that in terms of the actual application, if I assume uh, we manage to constantly get the 9 seconds cooldown and it takes about 1.5 seconds to move around and pick up the amulets, you can effectively cast 2 on the lightning blade in the time it takes Sing Chiu to cast 1. So this that is why the elemental skill looks like it will do more damage, right? Because it's 804% versus 611 for the Electro Traveler doing more damage than Sinchu. Over a 21 second period by the way. Not per single cast. We're talking about over a 21 second period. And for level 12, it's 942% versus 718%. Looks really good, right? But there are more factors to consider, such as Sinchu's BIS weapon, Sacrificial Sword. And I'll talk more about that later in the TLDR portion. I just wanted to quickly show you guys the comparison so you have, you have a basis of understanding of how the two compare against each other. 
And by the way, skill damage level 12 requires C5 Sing Chu. It's not very F2P, yeah? Hmm. We'll talk more about that in the TRDR section. Alright, now let's talk about the elemental burst. At level 9, the Electro Traveler has 194% skill damage on cast. You have uh, basically 448% damage at C6 for the Electro Traveler every 3 seconds. Assuming you, you manage to constantly trigger it, yeah? So for the first 3 seconds, you get 194% plus 448%, which is very, very close to this figure. But as the duration goes on, obviously you lose out. So the Electro Traveler actually does 1986% on the whole duration, whereas Sinchu can do 3220% or even up to 4600%. 4600% is C6, by the way. Yeah, not exactly F2P, yeah. So, but 322%, 3220% versus 1.986 is still a very, very nice figure. Now, if we compare, how about if you compare elemental level, uh, burst level chuff? Because to be fair, right, the traveler is very easy to get elemental level burst chuff versus uh, getting chuff on Sinchu, right? You know how it works. As long as you finish the content for Idanzuma, you will be able to get C6 Electro Traveler. Okay. So these are the damage figures. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it, but basically at the final figure, this is what it looks like. 2341% versus 3815% or even 5450%. So if you talk about the elemental burst, the traveler definitely falls behind to Sinchu. Because the, the traveler's duration is only 12 seconds versus Sinchu, which is 15 seconds. It has additional 3 seconds. That is why the Sinchu's damage over time, over the entire duration of the skill, would definitely be higher. But there are some other, some other benefits to the Electro Traveler's uh, burst, which is the energy recharge as well as the trigger source. It has one more trigger source, which is charge attacks. Which means that if you have a, imagine if you have a Hydro Gun Yu, it means that you can always trigger Electro Charge after casting the Electro Traveler burst, switching to a Hydro Gun Yu. I mean, I'm talking about like in terms of the kit, and just keep spamming your charge attacks. And how about catalyst users with charge attacks, right? Because if you know if you know how Sinchu works, it's only triggered based on normal attacks. Your charge attacks don't work. For melee characters, it's not so bad because before they they can do unleash their charge attack, you have they will swing the normal attack once. So for normal for melee characters, it's not so bad. But for bow and catalyst, this particular difference here makes Electro Traveler slightly better than Sinchu in terms of how it triggers. Now, energy. In terms of the overall amount of energy that you can generate, it's about 24 energy in the entire duration. In 3 seconds, you can get 8 energy. Oh, sorry, it's 32. Yeah, 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 sorry, it's 32. Plus it's 12 seconds duration, yeah? Okay, so 8 in 3 seconds is actually very nice in terms of the amount of energy that you can get. 32 is a, is a very, very nice sum, by the way. By the time you finish the whole duration, 32 energy is pretty much gonna give you let you be able to cast a 80 energy burst. 40 energy burst without saying is definitely doable. It, I mean what this does is that it really makes 80 energy burst characters be able to spam their burst. That is the key thing about this Electro Traveler. No? And who has a good 80 energy burst? There's quite a number of characters. The first one I can think of is actually um Beidou. And there are other characters as well. So, uh, take for example our dear Eula. Eula is also 80 energy cost. Okay? So, Electro Traveler, this particular effect, right, is a universal battery. Uni Electro Traveler is a universal battery. That's what makes her so good. Or he's, him so good. Alright, so this is how the kit works and compares between Electro Traveler and Sinchu. Now let's talk about the TLDR, right? Because I think people are more interested in the TLDR, which is fine. I That's why I even separated, separate, separated uh, TLDR session out. Okay. First off, let's look at this. Let's look at the TLDR in terms of the damage comparison. Yeah, sorry, let me move the screen slightly so that it looks more accurate. 
yeah. Okay, so damage comparison between Traveler and Sinchu for the elemental skill. It's not fair if I don't use Sacrificial Sword to compare, right? Because before that, when we look at the Electro Traveler, the Electro Traveler skill was doing more damage in the same time period of 21 seconds for versus Sinchu. But bear in mind there's something called Sacrificial Sword, which is the BIS for Sinchu, right? So if I compare Sacrificial Sword, you'll see that Sinchu is slightly ahead already. It's 1222 1, versus 1206. So slightly ahead with the sacrificial sword effect. At level 12, it's the same thing, it's still slightly ahead, 1436 versus 1413. But here's the catch. For most F2P players, right, you should compare level 12 traveler versus level 9 Sinchu Elemental Skill. Unless you happen to have C5 Sinchu. Unless you're so lucky that for some reason you have C5 Sinchu even as an F2P player. You might be that lucky, it's true, right? I mean, you save up your intertwine fates on the Sinchu banner and you're lucky enough to keep getting Sinchu, it's definitely possible. But for most F2P players, I'll say we should be, in terms of comparison, we should be comparing level 12 Traveler versus level 9 Elemental Skill. Which means I should be comparing a 942% versus 611, assuming no Sacrificial Sword, or a 1413 versus 1222, assuming with Sacrificial Sword. So, if that's the case, I'll say Electro Traveler still is better than Sinchu for most F2P setup. So that's why in my session rate, for F2P setup, a Traveler can even do even better than Sinchu in terms of the elemental skill damage, the Electro Traveler. Against a fully optimized Sinchu, however, you will be slightly behind. 1413 versus 1436. Which is still very very respectable, this difference here. Alright. Now let's talk about Elemental Burst, yeah? So Elemental Burst, if I compare the damage, just based on the whole duration so that it's simpler, you have 1986 versus 3220 and 4600, 4600 and 5450 is C6 Sinchu. Okay, not exactly F2P, yeah? And Electro Traveler at level 12 is 2341. So for most F2P players, we should be comparing 2341. Sorry, there's a slight mistake here. I had a slight mistake in my calculation earlier. But I have already vetted it. it's okay now. So 2341 versus 3220. Unless you happen to have C3 Sinchu. If you have C6 Sinchu, then it's an even bigger difference, right? So TLDR for F2P setup, Traveler only does 72% of Sinchu's elemental burst damage in a pure F2P. Against a fully optimized C6 Sinchu, this drops further to 43%. So in terms of burst damage, Electro Traveler can't compare to Sinchu. Unfortunately, it just can't. So elemental skill wise, yes, Traveler is better than Sinchu. Elemental burst wise, Traveler loses out to Sinchu in quite a significant manner. For F2P, it's not so bad. It's about 72%. Traveler does about 72% of Sinchu. For C6 Sinchu, it only does about 43%. But with the right setup, Traveler can actually boost the team damage in a different way, which is uh, the energy recharge boost contributing to the burst damage increase, assuming your team member is using the emblem set. Okay? So that is one other thing to consider. So in terms of damage, we have the TLDR already. Now let's talk about utility support for the elemental skill. So I'm not going to talk about these three because I already mentioned that these are the things that Sinchu has that Electro Traveler doesn't have. What is more interesting to me is the energy recharge. So energy recharge, the second figure here, how to understand this is that the second figure here is assuming that it can all stack. It assuming that the effect of the energy recharge from the Abundance Amulet can all stack. So it's either 20-60% or 20-120% assuming the Traveler's element is not, the Ascension, the passive talent is not active. But if the talent is active and you have 300% ER, we are talking about 50% ER buff and 150% if it can stack. If you have Sacrificial on top of 300% ER, we are talking about a 300, whopping 300% ER buff. Okay, 300% ER buff. Without 
travel without without uh without having to build any ER on your main DPS character that is you're gonna you're gonna be spamming the burst as a damage source, right? As a one shot kind of damage team, right? Just traveler will will fulfill all your ER needs. Okay? Traveler alone can fulfill all your ER needs. But this has a big, big, big assumption, and I'll talk about it. There's a very, very technical note about it on how the sacrificial sword works together with the ER buff, or rather the mechanics of the traveler's uh, ER buff. Now, a more realistic figure would be 200% ER, because 300% ER actually requires you to sacrifice all your artifact substats to get ER. Pretty much that's the case. But 200% ER here. Which is a very very realistic figure if you use a weapon with a ER substat, you only need some uh, rolls on ER just to get 200% ER. And now what we are looking at is figures of 40% ER for one amulet. If it stats, three amulets give you 120%. If you use sacrificial and sacrificial kits in, 240%. In fact, you can even go lower than that if you want to because all you need to do is to give 200% ER to your other team members who are using the Emblem set and they will already have gained the maximum burst damage bonus which is 75% Okay, so <laughs> that's why I say Traveler is really really good at providing this ER buff Traveler becomes the number one enabler for the Emblem set and if you guys think about it Bell, the Electro Archon is slightly going to be giving ER because if you notice the Traveler is always like a <laughs> lousier version of the Archon the Animal Archon uh, the Animal Traveler is a lousier version of the Animal Archon the Joe Traveler is like a lousier version of the Joe Archon in terms of uh, some aspects of it but I, I know that there are rumors saying that the Bell is more like a cooldown reduction kind of kit, right? But it remains to be seen. If Bell is a cooldown reduction kit, it's actually very, very good because you come together with Traveler, you have ER buff, you have cooldown reduction buff. Wow, you're going to be spending your burst non-stop. Even if those characters' burst is like, I don't know, 20 second cooldown or even longer. So yeah, very impressive stuff coming up. And on top of that, on top of the energy recharge, there's also direct energy gain from the elemental skill, 12 and 24 if it's uh, sacrificial. Now this, right, I'm very very confident that it, this will be the figure. It's only the e energy recharge whether or not it will stack, that's the one that I'm not clear. But it should be the case since there was there's no specific text to say that it does not stack. Okay, now what I want to talk about here. If amulet ER can stack, you can provide a huge buff. Huge boost, huge ER boost, okay? Up to 300%, but there's some DP loss, DPS loss in picking up amulets. Decent amount of energy is also provided. Getting you nearer to the burst also synergizes well with the new artifact set that reduces energy. I'm not talking about the set that gives you burst damage increase based on ER. I'm talking about the set that reduces your 15, 15 of your energy to get a 50% boost to your normal attack, charge attack, and plunging. Can't remember whether there was spongy attack in the description, but that's the set I'm talking about. Because by giving you this amount of energy, it offsets the 15 energy reduction and allows your character to continue to use your burst as well. Without terrible downtime on your burst. See another way that the Electro Traveler is good in terms of enabling the new artifact? The Electro Traveler is great for enabling the two new artifacts. Okay? Okay, I need to talk about a technical note here. Uh, wait, let me just move the screen so I can see more of the text. So, there is a bit of DPS loss uh, when you are doing the tech, tech here, right? In order to get the 300% ER buff or even 240%. So what happens here is that you need, with Sacrificial, you need to cast your Traveler skill. You swap to the desired character to pick up the three amulets. You swap back to Traveler to cast skill because of the text description of the uh, Electro Traveler skill where if you cast it it will reset the Abundance Ambulance so you have to pick it up pick all three up switch back to Traveler to cast swap back to your desired character that's what you need to do 
and then you cast your burst. Now let's assume you take about 3 to 4 seconds to switch around to your traveler, cast the skill, pick up the abundance ambulance, do that twice. Your 300% ER is actually only going to last 2 seconds before it drops to 150%. Because the first wave of the Abundance Envelope will have expired in that 2 seconds. So what this means is that you need to be... You need to set up your team such that you cast Constant, Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, Application before the Traveler Cycle, tra Sacrificial tra uh, Cycle starts. And in theory, while picking up the last 3 Envelopes, your Electro Element from the Traveler skill that you applied should already be removed. You should still have your Hydro, or Pyro or Cryo. And then you can set up on... You can set up your... Massive one shot burst damage along with Melt or Vaporize, whatever the case that you are setting up. Okay, so that's the technical note. It's a, it's a tech that you need to do in the game itself. And it's a very, very tight time slot of 2 seconds. But it's doable. It's definitely doable. I remember the last, last tight time slot I was doing was on the boss challenge on trying to make sure that my Eula's burst was still with the bandits at that buff. That is even that is an even shorter time period than this. It's even shorter than two seconds. It was a difference of one second. So definitely doable. Just that you have to take note that there's some DPS loss when you're doing this uh this tech cycle, where you cast your sacrificial, you switch to characters, pick up amulets. But it's not so bad because when you cast your sacrificial, there is damage done. It's just that when you are picking up amulets and swapping back to cast skill, there is some DPS loss, yeah? So that is the TLDR in terms of utility support for the character's uh, elemental skill. In terms of Electro Traveler's elemental skill versus Sinchu. So if you ask me, uh, in terms of elemental skill, since the Traveler, in especially in the F2P setup, can do more damage than Sinchu, and on top of that, be such a good enabler for the two new artifacts, as well as the energy recharge, I think Traveler is really looking really good and very very motivated. I myself is very motivated to use the Traveler. I'm gonna build the Electro Traveler for sure. Now, Elemental Burst. This is pretty straightforward. Nothing much more to talk about other than actually what I already covered, but basically, this is the type of energy you can get from the burst, which is very nice. And on top of that, there's it can be triggered by charge attacks, so it enables the Hydro Bow and Catalyst users. So maybe it work well with Kokomi, yeah? Or is it Komi? Me? Kokomi, I think Kokomi. Which is the lady that is the, <laughs> the comrades, comrades lady in the 2.0 trailer. The one who is leading the resistance against the uh, Raiden Shogun. So Electro Traveler will be a very very good enabler for Hydro Bow and Catalyst user. This is something that uh, Sintiu can't do. Sintiu's attack can't be effectively done on Bow charge attacks as well as Catalyst user charge attacks. Alright, so basically the TLDR on top of providing constant Electro application and decent damage in F2P setup for Burst. That I call it decent but... Uh, Alright, it's not too bad, but it's, it's really not high, okay? It also provides 20, 32 energy in 12 seconds. 32, sorry, uh, excuse my error here. It's 32, okay? Assuming full hits. And it synergizes well with the new artifacts that reduces energy as well. So not just the elemental skill for Electro Traveler, the Electro Elemental Burst for Electro Traveler also helps a lot to synergize with the new artifact set. Everyone keeps complaining about the artifacts that reducing 15 energy is actually bad for characters whose uh, burst is also a big part of their DPS. Well, with Electro Traveler, this is no longer an issue. Yep, with Electro Traveler, this is no longer an issue. So this, uh, this brings us to the final point, right? Is Traveler finally good? Yes, I'll give you a resounding yes. Although the Elemental Burst uh, can't compare to Sinchu, who is one of the top best support, DPS support, sub DPS support. Her elemental, her or his elemental skill does well. Especially in the F2P versus the F2P Sing Chiu is actually better. And the utility, the enabling part of the Electro Traveler being able to enable the two new artifacts in terms of providing energy and energy recharge makes the Electro Traveler really good. 
So I don't know about you guys, but I'm personally really really keen on building Electro Traveler. And this is how I'm going to build the Electro Traveler as a sub DPS, a crit DPS build with 200% ER. Because if you see the amount of ER gain, 300% is too much of a sacrifice on your stats. You should just go for 200%. But of course, uh, without having testing out the character itself, it's hard to say whether or not 200% ER allows you to constantly dish out your or constantly cast your Electro Traveler's Burst. My guess is no. You probably need like 250%, similar to Sing Chu. But given that, given that the Electro Traveler can cast three of these skill, elemental skill in the same time period that Sing Chu does with Sacrificial Sword, 200% might be enough. But this is something that Leaks will never ever cover. Leaks will not be able to cover. This is not something that Leaks can cover. It will have to wait for Electro Traveler to go live. But personally, this is what I will be gun for. Crit TPS with 200% ER build. BIS weapon, obviously Sacrificial Sword. I mean, even if the energy recharge doesn't stack, Sacrificial Sword gives, still gives you raw energy, still doubles the raw energy that you get from 12 to 24 for the elemental skill. So why not, right? F2P weapon, Festering Desire. Because Festering Desire has substat ER. You really need an ER substat to help you easily achieve 200% ER and get crit TPS. I mean, of course, the other way is uh, true as well. If you can get a good weapon with crit substat and in return you sacrifice your artifact substats, crit substats to ER, it's also doable. But Sacrificial does allow you one more elemental skill cast. Okay? Artifact set obviously will use the emblem of Sivert Siv Fate or Severed Fate because it's a whole ER team. Yeah? So, yep. This is, at a very very first glance, this is how I will build the Electro uh, Traveler. I'll probably do a more in-depth study on the Electro Traveler uh, Artifact Substat math before I decide how best the Electro Traveler should be built, but this is what I will gear towards based on the understanding so far of the entire video. Alright, the video still is a bit longer than I wanted, but it's shorter than the Kazuha math video. And basically, the TLDR is that yes, Electro Traveler is good as a sub DPS in terms of elemental skill. You know, against the F2P Sing Chu, it's better, more damage in the elemental skill part, part, but on par with a C6 Sing Chu. For elemental burst, unfortunately, it can't compare to Sing Chu. But the Electro Traveler is a great enabler in terms of enabling the two new artifact sets, as well as, uh giving you a very very fun play style in terms of spamming your burst so i hope everyone will enjoy the electro traveler and i definitely recommend to build the electro traveler yeah okay uh wait let me just look into one last part here okay right so these are the two new set i was talking about energy recharge by 20 percent increase elemental burst damage 75 percent based on 25 percent of energy recharge this is the set that i'm saying that the electro traveler should be using and the fact that Electro Traveler can enable, enable both of these because an Electro Traveler gives you energy recharge and also gives you energy so that when you lose 15 energy it's easy, easy for you to gain back the 15 energy Oh, and it buffs plunging and attack damage as well plunging attack damage and not to mention it also helps you easily get back the 15 energy to activate this again so the Electro Traveler is really a really a great enabler for this. Now my only concern would be whether or not uh, the rest of the new Inazuma characters I'm not talking about Yomiya or Ayaka, I'm talking about all the other rest of them, whether or not they will replace the Traveler or do better than the Traveler in terms of this role. I think maybe only the Archon would be the one or the Archon's uh, adopted daughter, the lady that was using a bow and looks really like her. Yeah, maybe those two characters. But other than that, I think the Electro Traveler has fallen into a very nice niche role of providing ER and energy and enabling enabling these, these two set items, these two artifact sets. Alright, so I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. Uh, if you like the content, remember like the video and click subscribe for more, yeah? Alright, thanks everyone for watching. Bye!